Hi everyone and welcome back to the Southerners Northern Garden. So I'm on the north, uh, northwest facing side of my house and I have a row of arborescence type hydrangeas. They're the Proven Winter Incredible series and I'm really excited about the growth they may put on this year. This is their third year in the garden. So the arborescence type hydrangeas are one of the easiest to grow because they bloom solely on new wood. So it doesn't matter if you prune them in the fall or prune them in the spring, you will get blooms uh, continuously throughout the year. Um, so I'm gonna prune these up for you and show you what they look like. Um, I think they're hardy to down to zone three, three or four. They're very hardy hydrangeas. So if you're gonna pick a type of hydrangea, pick an arbor arborescence variety. Uh, especially if you have very harsh winters. Um, this is their third year in the garden. I'm really excited to see how they grow. So come on and I'll show you how they look. So as you can see, I have a row of one, two, three, four, five. I have six of them total. Uh, they're just now starting to bud up. So when you want to prune your hydrangeas in the spring, you can prune them in the fall. But I like to prune them in the spring because you'll see right here, there's a bud coming in. Um, and you want to prune them back by about a third. I'm going to do mine for about a half today. You can see they're kind of leaning forward. I don't think that's because of the light. I think that's because we had a very bad windstorm last summer. Typically our winds blow this way and it came this way and bounced against the house and blew all these over when they had really heavy blooms on them and then the rain and the stems kind of stayed that way. So I'm gonna prune them back kind of harsh and they should fill out just fine. Um, there's actually some new growth down here that looks very nice. So follow along, watch as I prune these. So when you're pruning your hydrangeas, you want to remove any really spindly growth like this right here. I'm just going to cut this down to the bottom. You don't want to encourage blooms on that because they will flop. So I'm just going to cut up all this small wood and leave the really big wood like that. So I'm just going to continue pruning and just kind of watch the habit I cut it into. There's a lot of spindly growth on this one. Uh, I'm not sure why. Um, but I just want to remove all of that because there's a lot of brand new growth here at the base coming up uh, that will be much stronger since this is their third year. So I'm just going to continue pruning this around. Like I said, normally you want to cut a third off to a half. I may end up cutting this one a little bit shorter so I can put all new growth on these beautiful stems. You also want to remove any growth that appears dead or diseased. Typically those branches will be really hard. If you're suspicious that something might be dead, take your fingernail and scratch the stem. If the stem is green, then it's good to go. If it's brown, take it out because it's not coming back. So I'm going to bring you in close so you can see how I prune these exactly. So you'll see here, here's the bud. You just want to prune directly above this. Now this is, as I mentioned, arborescence type hydrangeas. So make sure you're pruning the correct hydrangea. If you prune a macrophylla, you could be sacrificing buds. Uh, arborescence, as I mentioned, is a good variety if you have really harsh winters or um, you like to prune things. So they'll always bloom for you every year. So I'm going to continue cutting all of these down. Uh, stay tuned and I'll show you what it looks like when I'm done. You want to encourage your hydrangeas to bloom upright and not flop so much. The Incredible variety, which is the variety I have right here, is pretty good about having tougher stems that stay upright after a rain. Um, if you do the old Annabelle type, which is the variety this one's based off of, uh, they have a tendency to flop. 
during the rain or uh, as the season progresses and the blooms get bigger. So you just want to make sure you are trimming off like this very spindly growth. It's very thin. It bends and breaks really easily. I'm just going to cut that down to more sturdy stems. And like this one's completely dead. Remove that. And just anything that's real spindly, get rid of. Some of these hydrangeas have much sturdier stems than others, so I want to make sure I leave all of those really sturdy stems. Like this, these are very big. I'm going to cut those pretty high because I do want these hydrangeas to get fairly large and fill in the space. I have my meter box right here. Uh, these trees I mentioned in a previous video came directly from um, Costco. I got them, I think they were $25 a piece two years ago, and I put them in when I put in these hydrangeas. So this will be their third season as well, and they have grown so much, and I'm very happy with their growth. I'm gonna cut off any blooms, any branches that are broken, uh, and anything that's kind of close to the ground, because like I said, I don't want these flopping so there's some branches over here that are kind of laying on their side I'm just gonna cut those off at the base because there'll be beautiful new growth that comes up around it now I do have all of these hydrangeas on drip they are have two two gallon emitters each uh, and during the summer because this they're still um, they this is their third year so during the summer um, they are more likely to burn their first couple years. They should do pretty good this year. I don't put a ton of water on them. Uh, this is tied in with the rest of my irrigation system, so they get watered when everything else gets watered. And I typically run my irrigation unless it's just super, super hot during the summer, 30 minutes at a time. So typically they'll get two gallons of water with when everything's run. So hydrangeas will root really easily if they have mulch around them or on a branch. So you can see an easy way to propagate your hydrangeas at home. Uh, if you need more, I could actually pot this up and I might do so uh, and let it continue the developing roots and it will actually be an incredible hydrangea. Now, it will take a while for it to get very large, but this is a good method if you need to propagate some hydrangeas at home uh, and to save some money. So I'm gonna continue pruning these and I'll show you what they look like. Okay, everyone, my neighbor's cutting grass, so I'm gonna try and go over this quickly. Um, so I have an atlas rose here. Uh, there is a climbing hematis, clematis there. These are daylilies. Now, everyone doesn't love daylilies. I found this variety to be particularly lovely. It's called Salome Double Classic. Um, and it produces a double pink bloom. I will show some videos or some photos in this video. Um, because I absolutely love them. They only bloom around May, but it's the same time the hydrangeas are putting on growth, and it's the same time this Stand By Me Clematis is coming up, producing blue and purple blooms. So it's really exciting. So you can see how I trim the hydrangeas. Some of them are a little smaller than others, um, but you'll be surprised how much growth they will put on. So subscribe and follow below if you wanna see what third year incredible hydrangeas look like. 
Uh, this one down here is a bit smaller, and the reason why is because I actually used the method um, I was talking about earlier. So I found a root that had been covered with mulch that had roots on it, and I planted it in a container and allowed it to get a little bigger. So this is, you know, directly from bare root, um, and it's the, about the same age as those. So I planted it at the end of the season after I found uh, the covered roots earlier from these. Uh, if we follow along this way, I have wee white hydrangeas, proven winners wee white. I started those from Hertz Gardens. Uh, they were four inch containers, so they are very tiny. They look a lot like the incredible hydrangeas. However, they only get one to two foot tall uh, and they have a little more pink in their bloom as they transition colors. Unlike the Credible that start all greenish and then fade to a white and then a brown. So with these, I trimmed almost all the way to the ground simply because the growth on them from when they were in four inch containers was so spindly. Uh, I didn't want to encourage that anymore. So these don't get a ton of sun. Like I said, this is north facing and they're pretty shroud shrouded by this tree above them. So they have been slow to grow. But I just put these in um, fall of 2019. So they've had one winter and one growing season. So I'm excited to see how they look this year and they may not do much better until next year. But follow along and we'll see how that goes. Um, I think that's gonna wrap up today's video for now. Uh, I'm gonna continue trimming some other hydrangeas. Uh, and I will record video for that so you can follow along. Thank you for joining me today. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, definitely check out the Proven Winners Incredible series of hydrangeas. They have Incredible, which is white, and Incredible Blush, which is pink. Uh, they both get five to six foot tall and wide. And if you want to form a hedge, they make a beautiful hedging hydrangea. They bloom on new wood, so you don't have to worry about uh, not having blooms, unlike macrophylla type hydrangeas, uh, and they're just a, a great hardy plant and look beautiful in your garden. You can take cuttings off them and add to the arrangements. So check them out, follow along, hit subscribe, comment below, uh, and I'll see you guys soon. Thanks for coming.